guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be reacting to 16 differences between Brazil and the United States, culture, food, people and more. Just got back from a trip to Brazil and I gotta say that I really learned a lot. When and not just go? about Brazilian culture, but about life in general. In short, I got some really great right. insight into Let's what life is like. Here's, I got the incredible opportunity to stay with two different Brazilian families from two completely different sides of the country. But within 10 minutes of meeting these families for the very first time at the airport, I would find myself constantly being offered things. All the time. And not just food or drinks, but incredibly generous hospitality. And this shouldn't really come as a big surprise, since Brazil houses some of the largest populations of foreign ethnic groups in the world. For example, the largest population of Japanese people outside of Japan is in Brazil. This is also shown in the way that they greet each other. A lot. Of That's an interesting point, yeah. that I guess how they treat immigrants is that's how they're going to treat the tourists. Mm. So if they're accepting of immigrants, like in this case, for example, Japan, Japanese uh, immigrants, then they're probably going to be accepting of tourists. I think maybe here, the immigrants, some people, not everybody, of course, but some people don't really want the immigrants. So you know, they kind of look at the strangers slash foreigners in a certain way. Mm. Brazilians that I met are not averse to hugging on the very first encounter. But in the U.S., they may be a little bit too forward if you're not yeah, that's comfortable cultural, with the person like, first. No, but through my eyes, at least, they really seem to see everyone as a friend. Which I think is just so incredibly fantastic and forward-thinking. The next one is Brazilians are never on time. Or rather, maybe I should say that life moves slower. If you tell a friend in Brazil that you want to meet them at 7 p.m., then they'll show up at 7.20 or 7.30 and no harm done. But in the U.S., 7 p.m. usually means 7 p.m., not... Not in Miami, doesn't. <laughs> Honestly, I I wonder if uh, this is gonna be like a lot of similar to what we see in Miami. Because the number one is, I don't want to say people are like warm in Miami because Miami was just voted the rudest city in the whole country. So I'm I'm warm. Yeah, but I do, like you know the whole hugging, kiss on the cheek. That's like very Miami thing too, yeah. like very Latin culture. So uh, the scheduling, like you know, being on time. Yeah, in Miami, no such thing either. 7.05, not 6.55, but 7. But there, it's much more loose on the actual time, and they tend to focus more on the time they have together instead, which, again, is so incredibly sweet. The I'm next one is that they don't tip in Brazil. Not too outrageous on time? Mm-mm. I think... You the, run on Haitian time. I, that's I a don't, whole no, separate that's time. that's 7.30. Like, okay, so you say 7. Okay, 7.30. <laughs> well, that's what they're saying about Brazilian too, though. Mm-hmm. They don't tip drivers, concierges, valets, waiters. Yeah, the tipping culture is uh, everywhere else outside of America. It's no, no tip, no mandatory tipping, and yeah, no tip. Like, but there can be other fees. Like you pay for the table like, if you want to sit. No, no, table. restaurants. Yeah, but this is not just restaurants. like the weirdest thing here is like you have oh. to keep tip your hairdresser. Like what the fuck? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice to do so, so they take care of you next time. In Europe, I've never even heard of but, such things. Mm. Uh, I just never heard of it before. Like. If that's what it costs, that's what it costs. Like that's yeah. So that that one is definitely a difference. The waitresses or anyone else, there just isn't Tipping a tipping is like, culture, is which is completely really different experience. in the U.S. Because some jobs, like waiters and waitresses in some states, don't actually make a livable wage. So instead, they depend on customers tipping them so that they can actually go home and eat tonight. And yeah. since they depend on this so much, tipping is really kind of required. And if you're that guy that just doesn't tip, then you're automatically in. But in Brazil, you get along just fine. All right, now we gotta talk about personal space. In the US, we have this like imaginary bubble around us that we don't want people to invade. We call it our personal space. And in general, if we don't know you that well, don't come into our personal space. But in Brazil, it's just space. Because whenever I would be conversing with someone, they would always get like really up in my face, it would seem. But really, they're just trying to be friendly, and this is a way for them to tell you inadvertently that they're focusing on you, nothing but you, and the conversation that you're both having. So it's really interesting to see these two very different, yet oh, both very yeah. viable perspectives. The next- That is interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, that, mm. that is something new. Uh, I, didn't... I knew like in Asian countries, there wasn't really- uh personal space because uh, my parents you know when they went to australia they stopped somewhere in asia in the airport they said like there's no personal space whatsoever so i kind of knew mm. that i don't know if it's the same in brazil too this one is the eating culture and i'm specifically talking about the time that it takes for the two different cultures to eat in the u.s we go to a restaurant to eat we go there we immediately order we eat our food and then we leave 
But in Brazil, you know, you may come in with a couple of friends, sit down at the table, wait for the waiter to come by, call over the waiter after maybe half an hour of talking with each other. Then you'll talk some more, get your food, talk okay. some more, wait another hour until all of your food is done, talk some more, and before you know it, it's just gone by. Eating, in my experience, was really more of a social event than anything else in Brazil. Another thing that I thought was absolutely... I think this kind of piggybacks on his number two, that life moves slower. Because people, mm. you know, it's not like if life moves slow, you have more like chill time. You, you're more or less worried about schedule. I think that kind of also ties into that. Mm. Hilarious in Brazil was how they called over the waiters. They would use words like bro, friend, buddy, and even champion to call the waiters over in Portuguese. Uh, oh, <laughs> campeão, a gente vai pedir. I just, I can't. Oh, you know, that. like Mostly my family says, sometimes say. So Boss, boss. Oh yeah, boss. here in Miami is boss man. Yeah, boss man is mm -hmm. yeah. incredibly. Yeah, maybe boss. that's a Haitian thing. I don't know. Huh. The boss, chief, a hey, chief. Yeah, a chief. chief. Yeah, yeah, chief. He's not chief. It's chief. Chief. <laughs> I'm saying in English, but I don't exactly know why. All right, the next one is something that I've not only noticed in Brazil, but also in some countries in Europe as well. And this is the idea that if you walk into any kind of social event. You have to say hello and goodbye to everyone yeah. individually yeah. at the party. Even yeah. if you don't even know their name, even if you've never this even was a little spoken bit or awkward seen them before in your life. For me, but I don't think like now, I think now the times are changing. This is not so much of a requirement. This is like very old school, old school thing to do. Like you, when you go today, you have to salute everyone. You have to kiss everyone on the cheek. Even if you don't know them, you kiss them on the cheek. But now, as people get older, now is not as common to do. Now it's like the culture has shifted with the younger generation. Say, so, okay, when you go to like a family party, you don't have to But, embrace everybody. So I feel like it's common here too, isn't it? To kind of because. When party you, etiquette? No, but like when you come over, you like say hi to everyone. I kind of feel like it's the same I thing. feel like it's like that here in Miami because everyone is like. Maybe. Because. Like Caribbean Latin. Maybe because yeah, here you know, I come to yeah. the gym, I say what's up yeah, to everybody. Yeah, 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 because you know? that's the culture. Here. You don't just come but in and say, know. announce, I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> but, like, like, you know? but I don't know in other countries how it is because I'm used to that too. In Lithuania, I'm, I'm actually thinking, yeah, at the party, you come in, you say, you shake everybody's hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do shake everybody's Even if you hand. don't know them. Maybe not. Maybe, I don't Even know. Even if you don't know them, you have to yeah, salute I, I, them. I, I think so, I think so, yeah. That's just, that's manners. I can imagine I you going so, to a party yeah. you don't say hi to everybody. What the hell? But What the hell? I, I kind of thought it was the same here too, though, wasn't it? I, I don't know, I guess not. But, so just imagine if you're at a place with 200, 300 people and you really need to leave, but before you do that, you have to go and give beijos to 300 people. Mm -hmm. I asked several Brazilians why this is, and give almost what? all of them told Kisses. me that. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, but it's just the way that it is. And for all you out there that are watching from outside the U.S., in the U.S., we would just give one collective goodbye to everyone and then leave. Or maybe no, we would just say thank you to the host too. of the party and then leave. But either way, it's really quick. And even though it does take more time, I really like the more personal... I mean, goodbye, I guess, is a collective goodbye, but hello is, like, individual. Mm. Goodbye, yeah, maybe. All right, bye, guys. I'm Like, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. But hello, no. Hello is definitely individual. Intimate nature of this cultural practice. It also gives you an excuse to go out there and be social. So that's one more thing. All right, the next thing that we have to talk about is meals. And since the U.S. is this giant melting pot with over 190 plus different... Yeah, that's, that's another thing. U.S. is like such a big country, yeah. so many different... It's just compare, I don't know where he's from. Uh, to be fair, no, Brazil is also a super big country. So mm -hmm. it would, <laughs> fair comparison would be like Brazilian state versus American state, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I guess it's fair nationalities living in it, we have a lot of variety in the food that we eat on a daily basis. But if you are in Brazil or you plan to travel to Brazil, there's a good chance that you'll be eating a lot of rice, beans, and meat. Lots I expect that you watch a lot of Brazilian food meats. reactions. Another small thing is that they only eat fried eggs in the afternoon and not for breakfast. And it was really funny because when I was staying in a Brazilian's apartment, I thought I would be nice and get up early and make breakfast for all of them because they were so incredibly nice to me and allowed me to stay in their apartment. So I made one of the only things that I knew how to make, eggs. And while I was making them in the kitchen at like 7 a.m., he came in with a cup of coffee and was like, What are you doing? No, he wasn't really like that, but he was kind of... I wonder how old he is. Several times. He has the baby face. Because what I'm kind of inclined to think 
is that he was like an exchange student and he stayed there. Because how? Why would you stay at someone's apartment? Mm -hmm. That's like a, as an exchange student. Yeah. Huh. Kind of shocked because he didn't know that we only eat eggs in the morning in the U.S. Another thing is that Brazilians never eat food with their fingers. But in the U.S., as long oh, as you're in private company, everything mm. can be eaten with your fingers. Everything. I've probably tasted that's soup so with my fingers before. But in Brazil, they'll eat things like pizza and hamburgers with a fork and knife. And this is so I weird in North know. America so that there was even an article published in the news about the mayor of New York City being caught, exposed, eating pizza or a burger with a fork and knife. Do you know and some places you eat pizza with a knife and fork? In nice places? No, no. I get what you say. Sure, but he's saying even in private company, you oh. that's what they say. That's what he's saying. That even in private company, they don't even have. That's, I can understand eating a burger with knife and fork. It can be too much. That's very shocking. Wow. You know, they Would should... you be comfortable in doing that? Well, if I have, I mean, if that's the, you know how people eat, yeah. But honestly, they should have put it in the shocking things about Brazil video. Now, mm. this is shocking to me. It's like, I don't know why this is so weird. I guess it's because no one ever does it. But of course, there's nothing actually wrong with that. Yeah, I don't but think whatever. it's weird. It's just The next thing shop, about like, Brazil unusual, that I, I absolutely mm -hmm. love is that all tax is included in the prices. So if something That's the whole world except for the United States. As mm -hmm. far as everywhere I've been, the United States is the only country that charges tax mm -hmm. on top. Something says that it costs $2. It's two dollars, but in the U.S. you have to like pull out your calculator and do all these math equations and solve for that. x and y. The the real reason why they do that because there is state tax, county tax, blah blah blah, and for marketing purposes, McDuff McDonald says it's one ninety nine has to be one ninety nine in Florida, same as in California. However, to me that's bullshit. It's easy just to include in the price and run different ads. That's it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's just bullshit. They're just too lazy to, to do it mm -hmm. wrong. It, it is what it is. That's how it's going to be because nobody's changing it. But the real reason is for un uniformity purposes between the states. So mm -hmm. Figure out just how much you're going to be taxed on all foods to see if you can really afford it or not because the price is always misleading and comes before tax. The next thing is that Brazil is very, very green. Even in the largest cities in the country, in places like Rio and Sao Paulo, you cannot get away from the nature. Whereas in the U.S., if you're in a big metropolitan area, you often won't even find the slightest hints of any sort of woods or natural happenings. And even though a country like Brazil is growing very, very fast, it is far less industrialized and you'll see a lot of empty space in between cities and towns. But this again just gives you another opportunity to look at the absolutely beautiful nature that is ubiquitous in Brazil. Another thing that you'll see in Brazil that you won't really see in the US is specialized stores. And this idea has a lot of European influence as well. For example, if you want to get meat, then you go to the meat store, the oh. place that only sells meat. Or if you want yeah, cheese, there's one here. Yeah, that here too, yeah. The butchery. Yeah, there's a beauty store a if you need beauty supplies. Store. Yeah, bakery. There's a cheese store if you yeah. find a cheese store. Pet store doesn't... if you need pet stuff. Yeah. I feel like we have that. I don't know if that's maybe where he's from. They don't have it. I don't oh. know. If you want bread, then you'll go to the respective stores for those. But in the yeah, US, they kind of just plump oh, everything oh. together and have people go to one place for everything that they need. But I feel like this really sacrifices the quality and the authenticity of the product that you're actually receiving. There's also a few key differences in small talk between the two cultures. In the US, we'll usually ask how someone is doing. If we're really boring, we may ask about the weather. And if we have absolutely nothing else to say, we may ask you about what you're doing today. But from what I've seen in Brazil, it's a lot more personal. They'll ask about your family. How are your mom and dad doing? Is everyone healthy? How are your pets doing? And even though this is small talk, they really seem to care. A lot more emphasis is put on the health and the well-being of those around you. But in the U.S., it just seems... That is interesting. I feel mm -hmm. like that's also maybe Latin culture because yeah. your dad always asked yeah. me that about uh, my parents yeah. and my sister. Yeah, so maybe and he cares. He yeah, genuinely may, cares. maybe that's more like cultural, like Latin culture. Because here it's weird when people ask you how are you, and you know they're not really asking how are you. You just say standard response, fine. It's just politely to to ask. Yeah. Well, honestly, I don't do small talk. So, no. <laughs> so for me in Lithuania, we don't really do small talk at all. Yeah. So yeah, so this is just yeah. It's like this meaningless cultural ritual that we do for no reason just because we want to be polite. Another thing. Brazilians are really touchy 
when it comes to American standards. And this goes back I to the whole personal fancy. space thing oh, that we are. Oh, I think, you know, the kiss on the cheese, the hugs, oh. just very, uh, I think it's similar in Miami too. Oh. I think we yeah. already talked about. If you're at a party, for instance, and you're in a group talking to both girls and boys, it's not unheard of for both boys and girls to touch you in a way when they feel really excited or as a form of exclamation. Especially if they find something interesting or cool about what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of oh, Americans, this can really be misinterpreted as that person just likes them. And while that could be the case, it's most likely not the case. They're just being nice. The next thing is this whole idea about a no culture. From what I've mm -hmm. heard, it's really rude to turn down something after someone oh, offered you something really? in Brazil. Yeah. Mostly because that person is seen as being really generous for offering anything to oh. you in the first place. So if you re That's interesting, and here yeah. it's polite, not rude. At least yeah. how I was yeah, raised is polite. Yeah, that's Not rude. You, 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 yeah, I understand. Like, I understand both sides. How I was raised, it's like, you know, when you, you know, when someone's off, you come to someone's office, just polite thing, oh, no, don't worry. No, you don't, you don't you, have to put worry. Yeah. You, yeah, you don't want to inconvenience the person by them offering and then, they, oh, they have to give you some, you have to do something mm -hmm. for you, right? You, so it's like a polite thing to do, it's just because you, you don't mm -hmm. want to inconvenience them. Uh, now, rude to say no, but what if I really don't want it? I don't know. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. somebody like, Offers me like, for example, beans, and I just don't like beans. How's you don't it? like beans. No, as an example. So, I, is it rude for me to say no? But I just really don't like it. <laughs> like, I'm supposed to inconvenience myself now by mm. force myself to eat something I don't like just to mm. be. I don't know. I don't know if I like that. Checked it. You're kind of disregarding their whole generosity. As long as you have a good reason for turning down something in the U.S., it's usually okay. And it's not like it's this incredibly strict thing in Brazil either. But it's definitely taken a lot more heavily than it is in the U.S. Interesting. All right, there's one more thing, but I'm going to turn it into two things because they're really, really quick. And just a couple of miscellaneous things that I've noticed after being in Brazil for several months. One thing is that most of the cars that I saw on Brazilian streets were manual. But in the U.S., the vast majority of cars that are driven are automatic, for sure. And uh, in Lithuania, it was manual. I think most of you was manual when I was growing up. But nowadays, yeah, the new cars, they barely make manual. Now, mm. new cars is automatic. If you drive a manual car, you're perceived to be part of this weird niche community that only makes up a very small amount of the population. But that minority seems to be in the majority in a place like Brazil. The second thing is that there are a lot of street animals around, especially dogs. And even though they look so cute and cuddly at first, you probably shouldn't pet them. There are so many videos on the internet about somebody trying to go pet a street dog and then consequently getting attacked. Lastly, I know I said I was done, but just hang in with me here. I've only been talking about differences in this video, but I want to talk really quick about one key similarity that we have with not only Brazilian people, but everybody else in the world. And that is that even though we have different perspectives, even though we grew up in a different environment, even though we speak different languages, we all have the same core needs and desires on the inside. We all want to be happy, we all want to be loved, and we all want to live a fulfilling life. But to sum it all up, we're all human. Mm -hmm. Until next time. Okay. Interesting. Uh, some were very interesting that I didn't know. That was cool. A lot of the stuff did seem like a Latin culture that we have yeah. in Miami here. So maybe for him it's uh, different. For us, mm -hmm. not so much. But yeah, it was an interesting yeah. video. Very cool. Mm -hmm, that was interesting. I don't know. Would you say we have a large Brazilian population in Miami? I know some Brazilians. Mm -hmm. Not like a lot, but... There are, there are some in the gym, Brazilians, yeah. yeah. Guys, of course, let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Join the Discord. And as always, 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 share as much kindness as possible.